Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, we are going to do an August garden tour. Some things are looking pretty tired in the garden and some things are looking pretty awesome. So come enjoy all these gorgeous blooms that I have in my backyard. I've been amazed with all the dragonflies that we've had in the garden this year. Can you see the dragonfly right there? And I've seen def several different types of dragonflies in the garden this year too. I, I don't remember having any dragonflies in the garden last year. So we're gonna start this garden tour off in the backyard and this is my cottage garden. So I have dedicated this container to my hummingbirds because the hummingbirds do love this familiar. It is also called Cupshe, but right now all the bees are just loving this red flower right now. I never thought that I would really love red in the garden or orange, orangey red, I guess you should say, but it does fit and it does work. And like I said, I will always have this plant in the container because I do love my hummingbirds. And then at the bottom, I usually try to mix this up a little bit each year, but I really, really like these colors with each other. So this is the new yellow super bells that was new this year and the black currant punch and then we have snowdrift and all those colors just marry really well together and then i have the decandra falls down here look how beautiful that is i always feel like this looks like lace and i love the detail on my container too So this container is doing really, really well this year. I'm very, very happy with this container. And then moving on down, we have the Wine and Roses Wadula. And this gives its big show in the springtime, but it does rebloom throughout the summer. And you can see I have some of these really hot pink blooms right there. And you can see that I have a lot of catmint in this garden, and this is Walker's Low. It is a nepeta, and if you've watched my videos, I've cut this nepeta all the way back, and it has flushed out really, really well. These are the reblooms right there, and you can see that the bees are loving this blooms as well. And then I have a foxglove that has gone out of bloom. And then the Bubblegum Super Petunia Vista is looking really, really pretty. And I did a video on dancing butterflies in the garden, and that was from this white Gara. I have five of those. So these, this plant could be probably pruned back right now. We have a long growing season here in Charlotte, North Carolina, so I might get some new blooms out of that. And then looking over the Gara, I do have some white cone flowers. I bought those bare root, so they're doing really good. And then I thought this grass wasn't going to come back, but look, I have a few shoots from the grass. So that was a nice surprise. Don't you love surprises in the garden? And then I have an obelisk right here with these hot pink flowers on them. There's some sedum that has not bloomed out yet, so I'm pretty excited that all the sedum's gonna give me some fall interest. I have three of these sedums here. And these are like a cantaloupe type coneflower. And they're a double coneflower. They've done really, really well and giving me lots of color. And this is the candy corn spirea. Love all the different colors on this plant as well. And I have three of those in this garden. This is a little gem magnolia. I originally had five of these Yoshio cryptomera trees that are doing really well, but one of them didn't do well. So it so happens that the middle one was the one that was suffering from what I believe was blight. 
So I just removed it and put this little gem right here in the middle. Of course, I have another one flanking on the other side of the garden between my emerald green amravates. Have some yellow cone flowers in here as well. So this is the second container of the concrete and you can really see the black currant punch right here is doing really, really well in this container. It's showing off more than the yellow. So I do enjoy the hummingbirds especially in the early morning. They're always, and I'll show a video of where they're on this plant in the morning time. Another candy corn spirea, and then I have some hardy geranium that's not in bloom, but I still like the texture of the flower there. More catmint. And this is lantana. Butterflies love lantana, and I do believe that these may come back for me again next year. And then I have some of the Proven Winners cone flowers back there. And there is the yellow still from the Proven Winners as well and the salvia. This is a lilac shrub. It is a reblooming lilac shrub. I have a few little flowers up there, just a tiny bit, just to give you an idea of what they look like. I'm really excited for this plant next year because it's not really been in my garden even a whole year yet. And then I have Morgara there. If I can't remember the names right now because for some reason I just feel like my brain is failing me. But anyways, if I can't remember the names during this video, then I'll put it up on the screen when I edit it. Another Wadula, another container. I have four of these Wine and Roses Wadulas, and I actually cut these all the way back because they were getting really leggy, and I didn't have much foliage at the bottom, so I took a chance and I cut the plant back probably to maybe, I'm gonna say a foot, a foot from the ground, and they flushed back really well and filled out at the bottom there. And this is one of the hanging baskets. I have three of these hanging baskets that look very similar, one here and one on the other side of the garden. These are Nellie Stevens and I made them to a lollipop. So I took all the bottom branches off the bottom and trimmed them up to be just on a lollipop on top and they turned out great. If you're looking for something different, you can purchase you a Nellie Stevens and make them into a little topiary. So this is the David Austin Rose called Olivia, and I have two of these, but one of them, the deer, had cut it back pretty, pretty severely. So you can see that what these blooms are looking like. They're just real, real soft pink delicate. I love the look of Olivia. I have two more lantana right here. I believe this was called Luscious Royo. And then this is called Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. It's more of a low-growing Nepeta than the Walker's Low. 
And then there's another variety that's in the back here and that one's called Cat's Pajamas. And this one's called Cat's Meow. This is Olivia that got severely pruned by the deer. You can see that I'm having some new growth. And this rose right here is called Celebration and it's been pruned back by the deer as well. It's trying to get some new growth on it. Not very happy with this plant this year, but performed great the years before. And then I have a trellis, a three-way trellis from Gardener's Supply. You can buy this online. And then I have a climbing rose. And then I have Happy Jack Clematis on the other side. So this is the very end of the cottage garden and I have some more lantana and this lantana has just really taken off in the last month. And then next to it is some dahlias. I don't know the names of these dahlias, but I love the color variation on these. You can get anywhere from this hot pink purple color to orange to yellow. They're mainly out of bloom right now. Here's another hot pink one. And here's some with some orange. Let me reach over here and show you. Orange cor corally colors. These make great cut flowers, by the way. I love all my dahlias for that reason. And this might look like a jungle, but more dahlias there. Have some catmint there. And this is the happy Jack Clematis that I, it has already bloomed once. I cut it all the way back to the ground to about 12 to 18 inches and look at all this new growth. And it is going to rebloom again. So keep that in mind about the Clematis, you may get some new growth and new blooms out of that. This is the new wind spinner that I just bought from Deerness Garden that I have a video out about that. My plant tall from Deerness. Let's go on the other side of the cottage garden and see what we can find. So this is a hydrangea that I've never seen bloom because the deer love it for whatever reason. I just love, love that plant. Let's see if we can find some pretty blooms over here. This one's obviously out of bloom. This is a different dahlia. This one's looking gorgeous. And then the I think this one is the Lilac Rose of Sharon. Looks really pretty, doing really well. And then I have a couple of different dahlias right here. This is a different variety and this one's a different variety too. So these Rose of Sharon's do and can make a really nice screening hedge if you like. They can get about 12 feet tall, I believe. And the blooms on these only last one day. But I have lots and lots of buds on them, as you can see. Oh, I try to get that bumblebee in there. It flew into this one and out. So this is another dahlia that looks really, really pretty. It's just starting to come out. And this is a mess, but it's because it's my fault because I didn't stake it earlier in the season. But some of these blooms have gotten rained on. 
me see if I can find a gorgeous bloom for you. These are big dinner plate. This one, half of it looks nice. And there's that one. See that bees are loving these dahlias as well. This one right here is another Rose of Sharon. It is the magenta one. And I don't really see any pretty blooms on this one right now, except for way over here. Still not a real pretty bloom. And then this one is the blue chiffon. All of these are the chiffon series. I do love this blue one. It's probably one of my favorites. This is another Olivia bloom. Lots of petals. Again, that's Olivia from David Austin. So I have several junipers. I have two different types. This one is one, and this brighter yellow is a different kind of juniper. And we planted these on this side garden, not even thinking that I was ever gonna do YouTube but we planted them more for erosion because it's on a steep hill. So I have several junipers on this side. And then these are the irises that I just planted. Come watch the Come Garden With Me episode three and you can see me planting those. And then I have some butterfly bushes that need to be trimmed. This super petunia vista is looking really good. And then I have some yellow lantana over there too that looks great. A little bit of the tall phlox that you can see right there. Kind of mixing in with that. So that tall phlox we had to just trim back. Hopefully it'll flush out again before the season's over. We won't get a hard frost here until late November, sometime in November. Weather's so crazy this year, you just never know what you're gonna get this year. And then I have another Rose of Sharon right here, and this is a variegated one, quite different. And I have a lot of buds on that, so we'll see if I can get some blooms. It looks like something's eaten on this. Dag on it. So I need to probably spray this. This is most likely some type of caterpillar and we'll spray some BT on it, but yeah, it's eating it quite a bit. Just noticed that. I was just here yesterday looking at this plant. And this is Joe Pie Weed and it has not bloomed yet. But I was hoping when I planted this to get some monarchs. So I don't know if I'll get them this year. I don't know what this bug is. Oh, it's like, got smart and wants to hide. Hmm. But I don't see, maybe it's gonna bloom. No, oh, I don't know. I don't see anything that looks like it's gonna bud out this year. This was newly planted from bare root. And here's another one. But this looks like it's doing something. Are you guys familiar with Joe Pie Weed? Looks like it's gonna do something there. And this is a puffer fish hydrangea, which the deer devoured also, but looks like I'm gonna have maybe something there. So we'll see if I can get a bloom, one bloom off this this year and next year I'm going to have to protect it more. 
the other side of the magnolia tree. This obelisk came from Gardener Supply online. I do love their products. I don't have links to them though, wished I did. This is a tropical plant. It will not overwinter for us. So that will only last one year. I can't think of the name. What's wrong with me tonight? This is my Baptisia and it does bloom early spring, but look how big this is. And this is known as a rattler's plant. It gets its nickname because these seeds will rattle. They're starting to rattle in there. Can you hear them? I do like the foliage, the interest that it gives with these seed heads and the different type of green. I like, like I said, I like the foliage. I like the texture that it gives us in the garden. And then I have some daylilies that aren't doing anything right now. This yarrow went out of bloom, but was gorgeous earlier in the season. And the serendipity is looking kind of pretty too. It probably needs to get more sun. And these are the Yoshio Cryptomira trees and they will get very, very tall. I hope I did not make a mistake by planting these in the garden. In this side, I have a Thomas Graham, David Austin Rose that's peachy yellow and it's not in bloom right now. And this is the coleus container that I have that looks really pretty. It was so hot today that I had to give it some extra water, but it just perked right back up. This is Ridiculous Golden Dreams. Have a yellow lantana there. And these are tea olives right here. This is a hardy hibiscus called Candy Crush. And then some of these coneflowers are going out of bloom, as you can see. So I ran out of sunlight last night, so I have to continue this morning. But just look at the view that I have this morning sitting on my porch. Isn't this gorgeous? You can still see the dew on the grass. The crepe myrtles are just bursting with blooms this time of year. They're really, really taking over the show. They look really, really gorgeous. I enjoy the sunlight popping up over the trees and still having a little bit of the shade back here in the morning. The birds are very, very active. I do need to give them some more seed. These birds eat quite a bit of food. You wouldn't think that they would eat this much. I go through probably a whole bag each week of bird food, but I do love them, so it's worth it to me. So I don't know if you can see the dew on the grass. It just shows you how much humidity that we have. Bosca bells are doing absolutely gorgeous this year. And so are the Gabrielle Oak. So 
So this is what the side of the porch is looking like. This crepe myrtle is doing really, really well also. I have a couple of chairs up here on our paver patio and then our stamped patio going out over on this side. I didn't get to show you this side of it yesterday, but I do have a couple of the Proven Winners strawberries right here, the very treasured strawberries that are ever bearing. I do need to get those out in the sun more. It's too shaded right here. But I did want to share with you this side of the coleus container. So this is the chocolate drop. And I love how this is mingling with the roses. So I think next year I'm gonna put some of this chocolate drop or some of the coleus in the ground. I'll definitely redo this container because I think it's, I just love it. Like it's simple, but I love the colors on this coleus. I love this ridiculous. And this one looks a little bit different because it's got these the chartreuse edges on the side, but this one's doing the same thing as it ages. I like the blooms on this one as well. And I love the newly noir also. That's another one of my favorites. But the golden dreams looks so pretty with this ridiculous. Like the, the colors play off of it. So, so pretty. So I would suggest this is like a winner in my book to do this combination. But I love how it mingles with the roses. I was editing my footage last night and you know I could not find a single rose that I took just plain pictures of this Thomas Graham rose. I cannot believe that I did not have one. I know I've got video but I could not find a single just plain image so I got to be doing a little bit better next year about that. Here's my hummingbird feeder, and I'll have those links in the description if you're interested. They're easy to clean. Hummingbirds love them as long as, as well as they do my flowers. These hanging baskets are doing really good. I designed these more for shade. Of course, I have a little bit more shade underneath this crepe myrtle here. Look how pretty the branching is. You can just see the sun peeking through this morning. And then I have another little gem, Magnolia. And this is where I started the new West Side Garden over here. So we'll get to that in just a minute. But getting back to this garden right here, this uh, basket, I do have some of the black currant, black currant punch right here. And then this is the Mohave fuchsia. And of course, the sun hasn't gotten to them yet. They close up at nighttime. It's the Mohave fuchsia. So I'll come back at the end of the video and see if they've opened up a little bit. And then I have the Rocopolo White Impatient right there. Look how pretty those blooms are. So this to me is a winner right right here. This uh these impatients that like part shade to shade. I'll read redo these again next year. And I almost feel like this Mahav, uh, what's it called, Portulaca, has done a little bit better in this space than these Super Bells. I have two of those. And that's all we did. These, these baskets are quite, quite heavy. 
very, very heavy because they're wrought iron and then they have the cocoa liners, but they're beautiful and I love them. But they're very, very heavy. So I could not find a shepherd's hook that would balance them out. So this is a four by four. We painted it white, found us some cute hooks. These are the 12 inch hooks. I think 18 inch hooks are perfect because they don't like butt up against that. They have a little bit more length to come out before you can actually put the hook on there. But anyways, th these are 12. You can do 12 or 18. I, if I had to do over, I'd do the 18. And then we just put a solar light on top. We did not concrete this post in the in the ground because we have the clay soil, so that did fine for us. After that settles, it's like concrete anyways. So we did not need any kind of concrete at the bottom. So we just did bury the post two feet in the ground though. So that is that. I don't see any blooms on my magnolia tree right now. I did put this magnolia tree up against the window because I wanted privacy in the window, but I didn't want to put any kind of blind on that window that leads into our living room. And then I have a couple stepping stones that my mom made me a long time ago. That I adore. So I have a few of those here and several of them around the garden. This right here, I just cut back. That was my pink Gara. So I'm hoping to get another reflush. And then this was tall flox. And then I had a butterfly bush back there that I just pruned back. My friend Dawn gave me this little cute frog from Unique Stone. I do love their products. So if you can ever grab yourself some Unique Stone, their quality of their work is great. It's concrete and it's stained. And then I have some daylilies back there. And I don't see any blooms on the daylilies, but I have some gorgeous pictures that I'll share with you. I'll throw up. So this container right here, it is not any kind of special container. It's just a, oh, I can't think of the word. It's just a regular container, but it is a heavy one. The real pretty blue. And then this is the lemon coral sedum. And I do have just a regular Acer palm that you can get at Home Depot that wasn't anything special, like 20 bucks or so. And I have a few pentas that are growing kind of tall up through here. I didn't think that they would ever show their face, but they finally did. And then earlier in the season, these Lugana blue, I can't ever think of that name either. They were doing really, really well and I had to cut them all the way back, but they're starting to reflush out. They do not like the heat. So hopefully they will flush back out in the fall and do really pretty. Look how gorgeous this lemon coral sedum is. I'm zone eight and this lemon coral sedum will come back for us. I have my plant tags in there somewhere, but they are so buried in this thick lemon coral sedum. And I have another small Baptisia back there. I made the mistake of replanting this one. They do not like to be replanted, but boy was it rooted in. I had a time getting it up. And I don't think it bloomed this year, so try not to uh, replant those. But make sure that you have those in a space that they like. Back here I have some of the Mexican Petunia coming up, but they haven't bloomed yet. So this is what the cottage garden looks like early in the morning 
And I already shared each of those plants with you last night. I'll show a picture. This one has changed quite a bit. I've changed it a lot this past year. I'll look back when I had nothing but the wadulas all the way down. And I didn't have any of these perennials in here whatsoever. I'll go back and look to see if I can find one of those pictures of early on what it looked like. So this is my more formal garden, and I do absolutely love this. I feel like this is one of my main pieces when people come in and they get that big wow factor from my backyard. But I have lots of sprinter boxwoods right here that are outlining each quadrant. So I have the pavers that wind around and swing down in here to this little small paper pit. Now anybody can redo this. Like I feel like if you don't want a fire pit, which I just want to enjoy the smell and the look of an outdoor fire, uh, fire. me and my husband really enjoy that. So that's why we went with the fire pit. But wouldn't it be gorgeous if you just had some kind of like statue there or a water feature? That would be really, really pretty as well. Or even if you just had a sitting area with the Galloway urn back there. That would be just gorgeous as well. But I do like the setup that I have. So I got this inspired from when I went to Europe. And I look at a lot of the Pinterest pages to see, to give me inspiration. And I just copied off of it. So it's not like perfect. It's not exact of my inspiration that I got, but I really, really love this. So I purchased the sprinter boxwoods from Creekside Nursery. Jenny at Creekside helped me get these sprinter boxwoods and I ordered, I think 75 boxwoods from her when I originally ordered boxwoods from her. And I think these have been in the ground for going on four years. So three and a half years ago, I ordered these from her. And I had the boxwoods first and then, of course, I couldn't get my hands on the David Austin roses. If everybody looks on the website right now and they all seem to be like where you cannot order, they're all sold out, that is because they don't ship out right now. They ship out to you when it is the perfect time to plant. So, yes, you need to order them this winter and then go ahead and pay for them and they will ship them out to you the perfect time to plant. I think they shipped them out to me in April or May. I have five Box Boscobel David Austin roses in here and they are a medium shrub. So they are perfect for the size. These sprinter boxwoods, you can keep them anywhere from two feet to four feet and I keep them right at close to two feet. But they prune really well and they're not really woody. They are really soft shrub. So I'm a big fan of them. Of course, Laura from Garden Answer got me started on those. You know that she, if you watch her video, she has tons and tons of hedges, but I think that gives the formal look of it and it gives it definition and it, it, it makes it the uh, shape of the garden, I feel like. So this David Austin roses, of course, they, they do a little bit better when you start having some cooler nights, but look, look how beautiful. This is my favorite rose for sure. And I like it because of the color and how it reblooms and it gives you pinks and corals and soft pinks all on one rose. See the color variation that you have on all of these different roses here. This is what the new growth looks like on a David Austin rose. Now I have suffered from fungus this year. I don't know why this year has been worse than any other year. The only thing that I can think of is that I didn't come in and mulch this early spring and I won't make that mistake again. And I don't know if that made a big difference or if it's because we had a lot of rain. I am 
I, like I said, I don't know, but I've been constantly trying just to, if I see like black spot, like I have right here, I just constantly trying to remove these leaves. I try to remove them from the ground as well. You can see this has got a quite a bit black spot. I've been treating it with the bear three in one, which gives it fertilizer and treats for fungus, black spot, rust, and uh, what else does it treat for? Powdery mildew. And I also spray it with copper fungicide. I'll have all those links in my description too. All the products that I use are always in my description. So that's what this quadrant looks like. And then of course I did, and I'm not sure I really planned this well, but these colors look really, really pretty with the crepe myrtles. This is called the Muskogee crepe myrtle. It's a real light lilac bloom. They're very, very pretty, but they are messy, but I don't know if I would do anything different with any other tree that I have. I thought I was like, maybe crazy when I planted like over 22 trees back here when this was like completely bare. I was like, this is a really small sp space. So, but anyways, the sun comes back over here in the back in the west, the east side of the garden. So hopefully I'll still continue to get a good amount of sun. I have a crepe myrtle here. And then I have a Yoshio cherry tree down here. And this is the one that the uh, squirrels have been trying to climb up. So I had to treat this with some I put some protective covering on that tree, so hopefully they won't climb that. And this is the back part of my rose garden. More sprinter boxwoods. And this one is Gabrielle Oak. She's a little bit taller than the other shrub roses. Still a medium shrub, but I feel like she has longer canes. Her canes are taller than me. This one performs really, really well early spring and later in the fall. But she has the biggest blooms of all. Of course, they're not big right now, but I'll be glad to share those with you late in the fall. They're going to be as big as my hand. Let's come down around here and see if I can find. But she's got a gorgeous color. I try to go with all hot pinks in this garden. I have four different types of roses. She has a divine smell. I have a bigger one up here. Let's see if I can pull it down. There we go. Look how gorgeous. Lots of petals. And this is more of a English old rose. The David Austin roses are. But if you buy them bare root, they're not that expensive to plant. And planting bare roots are not anything to be scared of. So that makes up this quadrant. I have four quadrants. Alexandra of Kent. I have a crepe myrtle. And then separating them, the qu different quadrants, I have this little walkway right here that's separated by the pavers. And then I have a phenomenal lavender here that I need to cut back. So I'll go over that in a different video. And then I age this pot out as well. I'll see, you know, that would be a, another good video too. And this quadrant right here is the one that we just went over with the Bosca Bell. And that is what we're looking at the front porch. That's what I get to see 
out my front porch. So going over here to the other quadrant, this one is called Gabrielle Oak. And I have, I think, 18 bo uh, sprinter boxwoods around here. These are not unique stone, but I bought those at one of the Ace Hardware stores. They have some good finds as well, but the same quality as unique stone. And it's just laying on top of my paver. Well, let's come down here on the porch and look at these Gabrielle Oaks. So these blooms are a little bit larger in the fall as well, but this one is a really hot pink, the, the hotter pink of all of them. You hear those birds in the background? But these have a lot of petals on them as well, and they are a really good rebloomer also. And I have five of these Gabrielle Oaks in here. They were so pretty the very beginning of the season. These bloomed out a little bit earlier than my Gabrielle Oak, than my um, Boscobel did. And this color looks really good with the Muscogee Crepe Myrtle as well. This is all on drip. So I have drip running to each boxwood and to each one of these roses. So then again, just like the other side, I'm separated by this little walkway that gives me my four quadrants. This, this back quadrant doesn't have as many boxwoods or as many roses. This one, I think I have only 14 boxwoods here and only four of the roses. And this is Eustasia Ave. And the deer have loved this one. So I didn't get to see any blooms, like hardly any big flush in the spring. But they've been to, I've not seen the deer lately. I don't know what is going on, but I'm not going to complain because they're not eating my flowers right now. But this is Eustasia Ave. This one's got lots of soft pink colors. So they, they come out a little bit stronger pink and then they age out more into a white. But I think this one's going to do good in the fall too. And I have lots of new foliage on these. So this is what I just bought spray for that. So these boxwoods and any evergreens here get spider mites really, really bad. So I sprayed them in May and then I need to spray them again here in August. But I think that might be, it looks like tent worm too, which tent worm is not from a worm, it's from a caterpillar. So I'm gonna treat it with both. I'm gonna treat it with BT for tent worm and I'm going to treat it with the uh, spider mite something that kills spider mites as well and I just bought the captain dead bug jack to um, spray and I haven't had time to do that yet but I need to get to it because I've seen lots and lots of webbing everywhere this year and then I'm Nellie Stevens trees that I did as little topiaries and then I have another Yoshio cherry tree here and then back here I have three of the Oakland hollies and I really really love this plant if you're looking for an alternative to emerald green albervates I think this would do a great hedge for anybody so these get I think 10 to 12 feet tall as well and they have just a great form to them. And they have a little bit of a different leaf on it. That, that's why it's called an Oakland Holly. 
They do have berries. So I have three of these. Like I said, they, they're doing really, really good. One, two, and three. So I had these kind of in a circular motion at the very end of this fire pit. We'll come back. Can you see what I've done there? How I've outlined it? Of course, it's behind this Galloway urn. So I would definitely do a whole hedge of that. So you all know that I love my Galloway urn. Of course, look at these uh, Dicandra Falls are pretty much just covering this urn, but look how gorgeous this is. And look how long it is. It is beautiful. And this is what the Galloway urn looks like. It has a lot of detail. And I'll see if I can find a picture of it when it wasn't so overgrown, but I'll still take this, these blooms. So this is the blue moon punch right here. And this is a super bells and it does good in containers not in the ground but this one is a workhorse you guys like oh my goodness in the very beginning of the season it was full and gorgeous and then it started to peter out a little bit i didn't cut it back but i did spray it with bt and then it started to flush back out it took about two weeks for it to flush back out but oh my goodness look how gorgeous and then at the very top right here is the Graceful Grass Queen Tut. This one's new for the year. Of course, they have like the King Tut and then the Prince Tut. The King Tut's the biggest of all. And then the Prince Tut is still very large in a container. So don't be deceived. I don't know if I'd ever put a King Tut in a container. It would have to be a very large, large container if I did that. The Prince Tut's big enough. But the Queen Tut is supposed to branch out more like so. The king, the, the other one will just grow up straight tall. And then the gumfrina is not, gum, not looking so great in this container right now. I need to come back and prune all of these back. But oh my gosh, the gumfrina is like looking awesome in every other part of my garden. It's actually taking over my front yard and then this is the Super Bell's yellow right here. It's new this year. And then I have the Diamond Snow. You found this tag. The Diamond Snow right here. And this is the Euphorbia Diamond Snow. And this is the Gumfrina over here. That's why I love to keep my plant tags. The Gumfrina. And you'll see when we get to the very front of the house, it's just taken over. Like, I don't really like it taken over in that area though. But if you had an area that you don't mind it getting tall, it would be great. So that's where I'm just gonna hide my tags right there. I forget these names and I have so many flowers and then some days I do good and sometimes I'm just like I can't even think of a name so this is my savannah garden looking from the other side and I made this as my cut flower garden so I have a lot of some sunflowers in there and oregano zinnias but look how pretty these zinnias are and we'll get over there in just a second so like I said this is what the other side of the quadrant looks like I'm closer to my hydrangea garden now and this is just the same Gabrielle Oak Bosca Bells over there you can see my footprints from me getting on the dew on the grass there I always share my grass tips with you too. I use the Anderson's product. So 
I think I bought my last bag of fertilizer. I'm going to put it down the first part of September and that'll be the very last time I fertilize this uh, grass. This is Bermuda. So September will be the last time that I will, that I will fertilize. And these are the containers. This was my very first video that I did at the beginning of the season that did really, really well. And thank you so, so much. So these are the petunias, some more blue moon punch. I'll have to look back at the name on this one. And then I also have another one in here that's not really blooming right now. Right here, I'll throw, I'll have to look back at that video and throw the names up. I can't really see any of my tags in here right now. Anyways, three different colors of the purple flowers. And I have the same shepherd's hook that we made. And that's what I mean by the, the hooks right here. These ones are 24 inches and they're too long. And yes, someone had mentioned that they thought this was upside down. If I put it the other way and I put the, my hook over here, it came out too far. It just did not look right. And I already had them up. I mean, it's a lot of trouble unscrewing those. So that's why these are here. These petunias smell divine right now. So I do want to remind everybody to please like, share, and subscribe to me. It is free to subscribe. And I look back on my stats and I only had 7% of the people that watch my videos to subscribe. And it does help me with my logarithm. And I have a goal this year to get 22,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And right now I'm not even close. But I did, at the beginning of the year, I didn't feel like it was like too far off that I could achieve that. So help me guys get to my 22,000 by the end of this year of December, 2023. So right now I have a close to about 3,400 subscribers. So if you can help me reach my goal, it's free to subscribe. I know when I watched Laura at the beginning of the year, I didn't subscribe either. So I'm guilty of that too. But the only thing that it gives is notifications. Let me get my shadow out of the video. The only thing it does when you subscribe, it just notifies you that I have a new video out. So these zinnias have reseeded from last year. I did not plant one single zinnia in this raised bed here at all. They all came from seed last year. Isn't that not crazy? But anyways, I have gorgeous colors. Most of these are the binary ones. Look at this. Oh, oh I just missed it. That big, huge bee. Maybe it'll come back. The uh, bees love these. Uh, moths love them. You can see a moth here on this one. The uh, hummingbirds love them. This one has a bee on it. But these are the binary and they're bigger zinnias than the other ones. So I have, I know I have the salmon, orange. I have a hot pink. I'll have to look back. Look how gorgeous this is. Isn't that beautiful? It makes a great cut flower. Look. And you guys, these bees only care about the pollen on these flowers. They could care less about me right now. But I have this color. I have a lot of cherry tomatoes and look how it's just pushed my obelisk down. So yeah, it's a jungle in here. I do admit I had so much stuff that came up and I only planted a few tomatoes, a few squash, which my squash didn't do good. I, I picked them way too late. They were, did not have a good taste, but they looked pretty. 
And I feel like these zinnias probably crossed a little bit. I have a little bit of different colors in them. So you can see my tomatoes all mixed in, intertwined in there. Some ripe ones down here. So I have two tomato plants in here. Look how crazy it's gone. I have a little bit of Celosia in here. It came back from seed. I did have some queen lime, which this might be a queen lime. Some light pink ones. So this is my raised bed that my husband made from cedar. As you see down there, I have videos where I put all of this to drip and where I planted all my tomatoes. And then this is the back side of the garden. This is where I just told you that I had the uh, Oakland holly. And this is my Savannah raised bed that Savannah sent out to me and I did a video on and I planted this all up with seeds. So you can go back and look at that video as well. And then they had these hoops that we put, we put up and then it's got a netting that goes over it as well. Two different types of netting. But I have lots of the queen lime zinnias in here. They're just not as big as I would like, but they're pretty. Lots of cosmos in here. Some seeds germinated and some did not. I planted a lot of this for filler. We'll have to come out and make a container. Maybe we'll do that at the end of the video. But look how pretty this Cosmos is. I have lots of different colors of Cosmos in here. Look at the sunflowers. How pretty that is. I have a few more. Oh, this is uh, the new the Celosia that I planted. Let's see if I can. It's tall. Um, let's see. Different cosmos. It's a different color right here. And then I already shared that one with you over there. I can't get over there. And this was the lime zinnia. So I do battle powdery mildew with my zinnias. This is what powdery mildew looks like. Wah, wah, wah. But like I said, that's the Savannah Garden. I have a link to that where you can get a discount code if you're interested. It is Savannah online. So look at the link in description. Go to description and hit more and you'll see all my links. And then this is the other side of my Yoshio tree. Let me show you close up. This is where I had to protect the bark. The squirrels were just running it and I'm going to protect the tree. This one's a lot smaller than my other one. And this is my bird feeder stationary right here. I need to fill them with some seed. I have a hummingbird up here on the rows. Can you see it? Let's 
So this is what the garden looks back. I'm in the common space looking up. So this is a far distance right here. I'm not even in my property right now. This is the back side of the garden. And this is my neighbor, Al. And this is part of the hydrangea garden that we're gonna start on right now. So this is one of the very first butterfly bushes that I planted. I have no idea what the name of it is, but it loves its space right here and it's doing quite well. So it is more like of a, a really true petite shrub and it has lilac blooms on it. And they're just so beautiful. I do um, deadhead these and that promotes new blooms. But look how dainty and gorgeous these flowers are. And this shrub is probably about three feet. Three feet by three feet. Like I said, it's loving its space right there. And this is a limelight standard hydrangea tree. The same as the shrub, but just in a tree form. I've had to stake this for years because these blooms are so heavy. You can still see that it's still leaning a good amount. I had it staked up for, oh gosh, three years or so. Now, I don't have as many blooms this year as I normally do on my hydrangeas, and next year I'm going to be super proactive about trying to keep the deer away because they took half of my blooms away, but luckily I have enough. But this is the Pride and Joy Sedum, and I'm super excited. This is about ready to start budding out I like how gorgeous this is, the sedum up against these rocks. I love it. I just love the look. So try to repeat this if you can. It's just so pretty. We have solar lights and these are just the cheapest solar lights that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. And this is the Jazzberry Super Petunia Vista that I had in my front garden last year. I'm like broke between a mono color and the several different colors I had this year. I'm not sure which one I prefer, but next year I'm doing all white. I want to keep that area a little bit more formal because I'm not liking the look of it currently. And then I had some daisies here, proven winter variety. I have a few little blooms still trying to hang on. The first flush is gorgeous. They're not a very big rebloomer for me. And then I had a penicetum here that I probably need to move from and get more sun. I have some hardy geraniums that are really, really pretty. Lemon coral sedum down here. And then look at the limelights. They are big so big. I just want to show you. I'm a hot mess. I didn't plan on doing this this morning. I haven't even done my makeup. But anyways, look. Look how big these blooms are. Aren't they so pretty? Gorgeous. And actually, like just by filling this one right now, like you can tell that this is probably just perfect timing to go ahead and cut these off. I can tell by filling them. They're already dry on the shrubs right here. So before they start turning brown, like go ahead and uh, cut them off. I'll, I'll come out and do a quick little video with you guys before I end this video of these hydrangeas. We'll cut some back and I'll show you how to uh, preserve them before they turn brown. So it's mid August and it's time to dry some hydrangeas. These are the ones that I had from last year. So you just saw a little clip of them in my container. This is the container that I'm going to use. And you can see that I have, I was gonna say two inches, but I have a little bit more than two inches, but probably need about two inches or so. So I might empty a little bit of this out and then we're gonna cut some brand new hydrangeas over there. And then we're just gonna place them in this water and we're not gonna add any more water. They're already starting to dry on the um, plant itself. So like I said, it's mid-August and it's a perfect time to go ahead and if you want to save some of these gorgeous blooms and bring them inside for all winter long, you can do that. And oh, last year, 
I cut some of these. I think I had maybe 20 and I put them in a big bucket because they're so big. You can see how big these are compared to my hand, to my head. But anyways, I use them as a Christmas wreath. And if you want to put some of these, you can like, uh, if you wanted to lightly spray paint them with a floral paint with blue, or you could do red or gold. Gold would be really pretty. These would be look really pretty into like a natural Christmas tree also. So keep that in mind, like think now. This one, I had my Felco 6 pruner. Someone asked me, no, this is Felco 2. I'm gonna have to tell that person I told them wrong. Felco 2 pruners is what I have. I told them six, shoot. Well anyways, these fit perfect in my hand. I have a really small hand, like I have a size four and a half ring. So anyways, Felco 2 pruners. But I'm gonna make it long enough so I, so I can have the exact length that I want over there. So just cut it long enough for your container. And then when we get over to our container, we're just gonna take all of these lower limbs off. I'm just gonna strip them off like this. I like to take all of them off since I'm drying it as a dry cut flower because they're gonna just droop and they're not gonna be very pretty, but yeah. See, that's gonna make a gorgeous dry bloom. Another real pretty one. They're all so pretty. And those ones that are on the side of the house in that new west side garden that I did, they are absolutely huge. So I'm definitely gonna have to go save some of those too. I'm just throwing these in the yard. I'm not gonna leave them there. My husband is OCD, but I am too. So anyways. I'll pick them up in just a minute. Okay, like I said, I have about an inch or two water in here. I'm not gonna add any more water. This is all the water that I'm gonna have. And these are already starting to dry. You can kind of feel that they just feel more papery. They're not soft. It's kind of really hard for me to, but you can tell, you can feel that they're drying on to the plant already. So, I don't know, that might be, that's a little bit too long, I think, for me, so I'm gonna cut it just a little bit. I don't think it really matters how you cut it. You can cut it at an angle or straight across. I don't think it really matters. This one's already kind of drooping down on me. I like that length. I might cut this one just a little bit shorter. So I have three, you can add more if you'd like. I could probably fit a few more in here. But I think these are a little bit smaller than what I had originally. But just to give you an idea, that's how you do it. You just set it on the table and leave it. So like I said, you can just tell by filling them that they're already drying on the stalk. These are gonna be perfect size to dry. Look how big they are. I still had some from last year, but they've already turned more brown than this limelight green. They already have like colors of pink. Do you see that web? I don't know if you could see it in my video or not. I can't see it in the video. There it is, I can see some of the webbing. Yeah, I really need to get out here and start spraying for some spider mites. But look.
I got webs everywhere. So last year I kept these blooms on my hydrangeas. Of course, I, I shared some with my neighbors and asked them if they wanted some dried blooms. And then I left some on, but this year I don't have as many as I did last year. Cause like I said, the deer took half of them off. You can see where they came and just the very front here, just all the way down, took all of my blooms off. And there, I do have some blooms trying to come back like right here. So we, like we do have a long growing season. So maybe I'll get a few more blooms by the end of the season. We'll see, but yeah. But anyways, that's what happened. So they, luckily I have probably 12 limelight hydrangeas in this area, maybe six or seven on each side of this uh, little gem magnolia. And they got this shrub pretty good right here. This is Grace from Unique Stone. And that's what it looks like looking back. It's in the shade now. And then I like three tiers, my emerald green on bravates right here. And then I had to replant some. They're not all growing at the same rate as you can see, but they've gotten much bigger than I started. I'll share a picture of it when we first started what this garden looked like. And then, so emerald green on bravates, first tier, they get 13 feet tall. The little lime hydrangeas will get five feet tall. And then I have some ground cover with the uh, Roxanne geraniums. And then I'm trying to keep some petunias in here, some salvia, and then some of the lemon coral sedum too, which comes back every year. This is where, I need to prune some of this back. This is where it went to um, flowers. And if you don't like this, which I don't like the look either right now, this just pulls right off. So I need to come in here. I've I've like done some, but I didn't get to all of them. See how it just comes right off. I have another one right there that I need to get to as well. And then this is the Roxanne geraniums and that is the Jazzberry Super Petunia from Proven Winners. This Roxanne Hardy Hydrangea is not a Proven Winner one, but look, I've was quite surprised to see how tall that they would get. They're like peeking all the way up through these hydrangeas here. So I love that color variation of that peeking up through these hydrangeas. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. So you can see I already start have I already have some starting to age and I will cut these back. I actually think this whole branch is not living anymore because it's pretty much dead. So definitely got to cut that back. You can see more webbing back there. So I've really got to get to these emerald green overvates. The spider mites can kill. Bagworms can kill your evergreens and so can spider mites. So don't wait until they start turning brown on you. It's a big investment. And this is my arbor. My air conditioner just kicked in, kicked on. And I'm gonna have something climbing on that. I wanna get a yellow rose from David Austin. So that's gonna be my purchase for next year. Okay, so let's come to the very front while that air conditioner is still on. So you can see the crepe myrtles. These are the muskogee that they replanted at the very beginning of the season. They had to turn over our streets to the um, DOG and they did not approve of all the trees that were in the sidewalk area. So they came in and 
replanted all of these trees. All of our trees were three to four, four, well, over four years old because we've been in the neighborhood for four. And now we have nothing but crepe myrtles. But you can see how pretty they're doing. They're all starting to bloom. So this is what the front of the house looks like. And like I said, this front garden over here, I'm not happy with it right now. I enjoyed it early on in the season, but now like you can't see any of my boxwoods and it is just a jungle. So I'm trying to hang on and not just tear all this out. The Gumfrina is the show right now. It is doing better than anything, but it's probably about three feet tall, taller than my boxwoods. And you can't even see my boxwoods. You can hardly see my Japanese maple. Look how pretty the hardy hibiscus is. This is a very awesome hibiscus and it is actually hibiscus week. So the proven winners hibiscus week. Let me come a little closer. But these um, have lots of blooms on them. They do very, very well. This one is super, super happy in this spot. And look how big this bloom is. It is gorgeous. The pollinators love it. It gives a big, big, bright pop of color. And everybody that goes through the neighborhood asks me what this plant is. There's three of them together. I've got to take a picture of that. So I do have to remove these blooms on a daily basis because they only last for one day. Some of them will drop onto the ground and I'll have to pick them up and then some I'll just come and then go ahead and just remove off the plant like this one. They pull off really, really easy. And this is my jungle. So I was looking back at pictures when I was editing my video last night. And of course the super petunias were so vibrant and doing so much better. And it's just hot right now. I do have a lot of color, but you can tell, let me show you, that they're just all dead underneath. And they're like crispy, they're really crispy. They're just not doing as good as they were. But these are the new Super Bell, not Super Bells, the, sup, the new Super Petunia Vista, Mini Vista, that's yellow. And then I have a purple that's in here. I'll just figure out what the name is. I cannot remember it right this second. Then you can see that I'm having some budworm damage right there. Something's eating on that plant. So that's maybe why I don't have as many blooms. But I did spray that for budworm already because you can see the uh, color of the budworm spray on some of these petunias. Yeah, like the gumfrina is doing awesome. Look how beautiful that is. But for me, it's just not the right place for that because you can't see my spiral boxwoods or any of the other boxwoods that are behind it. So yeah, that's, it's just feel like I'm just not loving it right now. I have the yellow, the purple, and the persimmon in here. Of course, the persimmon can't really see right now except for over here and this is where the persimmon this corner is looking really really well but I don't have as much gumfrina over here so you can see the gumfrina I don't know why I cannot remember that purple flower and then I have the new persimmon which I really like the new persimmon it is a real pretty color and then I have different super bells in these pots right here. I repeated the queen tut. I have the lime thyme coleus. 
I have some Dicandra Falls in there that's hidden. I have some of the Diamond Snow and the new Lemonade. Super Bells. And that one's doing good. The Super Bells are doing still nice. There's the Japanese maple. And then I've already pruned these spiral boxwoods a couple of times, but I'm glad I'm getting new growth on those. And then my boxwoods back there need to be pruned as well. So that's gonna be my next project. So uh, what I think I'm gonna do, and I hate to, but go ahead and remove all of these and put something different, maybe marigolds or something simple for fall and then so I can have my Japanese maple highlighted and then go ahead and get these boxwoods pruned up so they're nice and tidy and a little bit more formal looking. So I decided next year I'm not gonna do, do the same design. Gumfrina I will put in, but I think that'll be prettier in the cottage garden or on the west side garden, but towards the back, not towards the front because they get too tall. And it took a while in the season for these to get tall. And then I envision the white mini, mini Super Tunia Vistas all the way up here in the front. I think I'm gonna keep it more formal and simple and elegant next year. I think white would be pretty with all the white that I have going on on my house here. Now on this side garden, these cat's pajamas are doing really good. I've already pruned them back once and they reflushed again. So you can see they still, they stay small and petite. And then we pruned this juniper up a couple of times. This planter is just okay. I need to come back and prune these Great Punch Super Tunias, or not Super Tunias, Super Bells. I need to prune them back so they'll flush out again. And then I have the yellow Super Bells, the Gumfrinas in there as well. And then this container was small and I had nothing but the Super, the, um, super Bells in there, the new yellow Super Bells. And this is the other side of the Boxwoods right here. Always throw some cute pillows and then a couple of wreaths up there. And then you can see this side of the garden. This is part of the west side garden over here. I have another huge limelight standard hydrangea tree over there. And then I have a climbing rose here that's called Lady of the Lake. Love her flowers. And I got two, two big climbing roses here, which I did not need. So I think I'm gonna pull one of them up next year and just have one in this area. And I'm gonna gift one of them to my friend Bonnie so she can put it on the side of her house and have it climbing up the side of her house. But these are what these blooms look like. I have a lot of new growth. And then just trying to keep these canes, they're really, really long canes in control has been a battle for me this year. But yeah, you can see that I have two plants right there. One's growing this way, and the other one I have pretty much trained up against this post. Same flowers, same flowers in this one. This is the lemonade right there, let's see, I think it was lemonade. Diamond Frost, oh, Honeyberry in this one. That's Honeyberry in the Graceful Grass Queen Tut. That's why I like to keep my tags right there. I have two. I have honeyberry and the lemonade in here as well. This side of the garden, I love. This 
pulls up to my garage onto the driveway. It's a skinny, small area, really, really small area. And then this was, this is more for shade, but it's done good in some sun too. Of course, I have morning sun right now, but this is that flirtatious, some kind of flirtatious. I'll, not sure the name, I'll have to throw it up. But I originally had this in this container right here. This is a three tier container from Kinsman. And I'm gonna, I did this, repeated this twice. So the first time I had this endless flirtation and I had these caladiums and I did have a few of these white uh, sun patients in this container and they were not doing good at all. If I maybe had gave it some time until the hot sun and heat came, maybe I'd done better because you can see that I forgot one of the caladiums here and it's starting to show and peak itself. But anyways, like they were struggling and I did not want to lose these because these caladiums were pricey. For me, they were pricey and I wanted to make sure they lived. So I took them out and redid this whole Kinsman container. So I'll put the link up to Kinsman, but Kinsman is an online company and they have great products, but it is just a wrought iron with the cocoa liner and it's three tiers. So smaller on the middle, small on the top, then the middle is a little bit bigger and then the bottom's larger. But I love this. I think it's elegant. I think it's just priceless. And it looks like to me, like how I put this like from the top tier, it looks like a veil that just goes all the way down to the ground. Now this one's planted in the ground, but look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is where it comes from the bottom on the ground and just works its way up to the planter. To me, it looks like a veil, a white veil, just gorgeous. And these were the blush pink. And I like that this, this um, leaf foliage is a little bit different than the white. You can see that this has a darker red on it than the white. So it gives you a contrast that way also. But yeah, I love it. I'll repeat that next year. The same colors, I just, I, I love it. I enjoy this every time I pull up into the garage. I think it's beautiful. I had some pintas in there as well and they weren't doing good. They're doing better in the ground. Look how beautiful. So on the west side garden, I have some petunias that are really petering out and I bought these vincas to replace over there. So that's why I have those. So right now, if I had a magic power, I would tell everybody to stop making noises. But anyways, you might not think that I had that very many cut flowers in my garden, just looking at everything, but look at this gorgeous bouquet that I was able to make in my garden today, like from this garden tour. So you can see that I have some really pretty dinner plate dahlias right there. And then I have, this is a different type of dahlia. I don't, I'm really bad about the names of the dahlias. And this is a dahlia. And then I have some zinnias. I have some orange, some salmon, and some of the real hot pink. And look at this gorgeous blue flower that I got. This is what I had in my savanna garden. And I had one blue flower, so I'm like, I'll take it. I'll take the one blue flower. And this is the lime zinnia. And this one is the clean lime zinnia. And this right here is Cosmos. And this is the salvia or the um, sage or something like that that I was growing right there. That is so pretty. And this is that seacrest. Like, doesn't this make it look magical? I think it looks so magical. It like kind of gives it some airiness. And then I have some sunflowers in there. So can you imagine if you had someone at work or a neighbor that had a birthday and you, you were able to take this to a birthday party or if you had like a dinner 
and you didn't have anything to take and you took you took them a bouquet like look how gorgeous and happy you would make them I hope you found this video inspirational and make sure you like, share, and subscribe. It's free to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.